Hello everybody, this is Ryan Harder, Technical Agronomist with Sound Agriculture, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Sound Advice, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about potassium and its role inside the plant. So one thing to look for when scouting for potassium deficiency in your crops is oftentimes you will see yellowing on the leaf margins and start to see some necrosis following that chlorosis. And so it's going to mimic nitrogen deficiency somewhat, except for where nitrogen has that V coming inside from the leaf tip, the uh, potassium deficiency is just going to be on the margins of the leaf and work its way inward that away. So they're almost completely completely reversed, so the margins or the outside of the leaf is going to start to show that uh, that chlorosis and necrosis first. And so oftentimes when we see this, this potassium deficiency, we're going to look at field edges, typically have it the worst, but there's also a lot of spots, low CEC spots, and fields that are low in soil test. Potassium can definitely show potassium deficiency, as well as when we get into dry periods of the year. So when looking for potassium deficiency, a lot of times we find it when we are in dry times of the year, and that's because potassium is taken up by diffusion. So 90% of potassium uptake uses the process of diffusion, which is the net movement from an area of large concentration to smaller concentration. And so this is important because we have to have water in order to get that potassium into the plant, or in times where we have dry periods, we're gonna to have to rely on higher concentrations of potassium or readily available potassium to be able to get into the plant since we don't have that water to move it in there with diffusion. And so there's a few different management strategies we can take to really hitting this head on and being proactive about it versus taking a reactive stance. One of those is making sure we're doing rigorous soil testing. So every three to four years, we're gonna make sure we're pulling soil tests typically on a two and a half acre grid. And that way we can get a good feel for what's going on in our fields and it can tell us what, how we're doing tracking with potassium and if what we need to make with potassium applications. Oftentimes the variable rate prescription is recommended for this so that way we can increase ROI and put the potassium where we really need it the most. Once we determine that a potassium application is necessary, we want to make sure that we're doing it in the right way. And so a lot of times with low CEC soils, the closer we can apply that potassium to planting into the crop's needs of that actual fertilizer, the better off we're going to be. Oftentimes this is due to the fact that low CEC soils can actually leach potassium if we get a lot of of rain especially due to the fact that it has a low low cation exchange and so therefore it's going to be knocked off that soil colloid before a lot of other cations that have a much higher exchange capacity that really limits the amount of potassium that can bind to that soil colloid and therefore we're going to flush a lot of it out of that in low organic matter soils such as sands and low CEC soils where we get under 10 especially under 5 we can definitely see decreased potassium soil test levels and so we need to make sure we're being smart about making potassium applications and make sure that they're being made at the right time of the year so we can take full advantage of those. Another way to optimize the potassium in your soils to use a product such as Source that's going to help increase the microbiome and make sure that those microbes are actually breaking down a lot of that potassium that's in our soil. So we have a lot of elemental, elemental potassium in the soil that's there that it takes years and years and years and thousands of years even to get broken down into readily available format. And so what we're gonna use, we're gonna need K2O is a readily available form of potassium that goes into the plant. And so basically what we need to do with the soil microbes is get that elemental potassium broken down into K2O in an increased microbiome population, especially right there at the root zone where we're taking all those nutrients in is gonna drastically help increase the potassium uptake in the plant and make our potassium applications a lot more applicable and a lot more efficient for, for growers. So in review here, we wanna make sure that when we're diagnosing potassium deficiency, we're doing that correctly, looking at the margins of those leaves, and it's gonna start at the bottom of the plant and work its way up because potassium is in fact uh, mobile in the plant, so it's gonna to start to steal from the lower leaves and feed the newer leaves and the newer growth on the plant. So right at the base of the plant is where you're gonna to start to see it, and it'll start to work its way up as the deficiency gets more severe. We also wanna make sure that we're soil testing. We wanna make sure that we're using variable rate technology and also using products such as Source to make sure that we're getting the highest return on our potassium applications and that we keep the crop growing and healthy throughout the growing season. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Sound Advice. If you have any questions, please reach out. Thanks.